In the theoretical presentation of the Dharma, refuge and bodhicitta are presented as being separate and distinct. However, a bodhisattva, already when taking refuge, does so with an awareness of the ignorance of all beings and with a desire to bring to an end the suffering caused by this ignorance. We ask ourselves, what is the best protection one can offer to others? This is the refuge in the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And so we have the wish that it will actually be ourselves who will provide this protection for other beings. This is why we have the desire to attain enlightenment as quickly as possible in order to be able to protect them from their suffering and to liberate them. We call this the commitment to the result. The commitment to the application, then, is I am going to practice the Dharma. I am going to commit my body, speech, and mind, and all my energy to the fulfillment of this wish. I will do this by taking refuge completely and definitely for now and forever in the Three Jewels, who are the unsurpassable and infallible protection. This is the commitment to practice. We are carrying out the wish to free all beings from suffering and establish them in the state of enlightenment. For this, there has to be a complete surrender of ourselves. We dedicate all our energy, our whole life, to the fulfillment of this aim. And in order to do this, we place ourselves and all beings in the hands of the three jewels. I'm not sure if this is correctly expressed from an academic point of view, but this is what I feel. Suppose there are two people who both wish to plant a tree. One says, I have some land, I'm going to plant a tree, and when the tree has grown, I will enjoy the fruit that it produces. He considers himself to be the owner of this tree, and so its fruit will also belong to him. The other man plants the same type of tree, but with the intention, when this tree has grown and is bearing fruit, I would like everyone who passes by to take and enjoy its fruit. I have absolutely no feeling that this tree belongs only to me. The results will be different because the initial motivations are different. The Mahayana motivation of a bodhisattva is to wish that the fruit of one's practice be used solely for the benefit of others. 
Our whole spiritual progress depends upon the extent to which we open our minds. In other words, if we really give birth to this bodhisattva motivation, our spiritual practice will become something extremely vast with immense results. When this motivation to practice the Buddha's teachings for the good of all beings is sincere and heartfelt, it is the source of an immense joy. It completely fills us with this joy, aspiration and enthusiasm. When we dedicate ourselves to the practice in this way, then this commitment will not be mere words, but a profound truth born out of this joy.